Also, I thought it would be interesting to look at my phone screen time to see how I did this week. It just didn't do it for me. I feel like this book, it, it just does what I never thought was possible. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Leonie and I have a week off. I'm really happy. <laughs> last Friday, I handed in my very last university assignment ever. Weird. I only have one thing left before I graduate. That one thing being a seven month internship, but it's still one thing. <laughs> what I don't want to happen is something that happens a lot when I have free time and that is that I just get eternally sucked into the void that is my phone screen when really I want to be doing other fun things. The other thing is that I have not finished a book since September, but I am currently reading seven books and I haven't finished a single one. <laughs> so my goal for this week is to just put down my phone, not be on that too much, and try to finish all these books that I'm currently reading or decide that I don't want to finish them. You might be asking, Leonie, seven books? Why the hell are you reading seven books? So two of these are romance books that I'm actually reading for another vlog. I have a reading romance books vlog coming up, so I won't be talking about those in this video. Uh, but let's talk about the other five. Let's start with the physical books. I am still reading Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I picked up this book for Halloween. It is no longer Halloween, it's a month later, and I'm still only at page like 100. This is the classic story about the mad scientist Victor Frankenstein that creates Frankenstein's monster. It's way less about Frankenstein's monster and so much more about, you know, like math scientists and this like ambition, almost dark academia vibes. Somehow along the way, I just kind of stopped reading this, <laughs> probably because I was very busy and just did not feel like reading a classic, but I really want to pick it up again because I'm really enjoying it. Another book that I picked up for Halloween, whoa, they're so dusty because they've been sitting on like pretty much under my bed. I have a short story collection, Songs of a Dead Dreamer by Thomas Ligotti. I wanted to read these short horror stories again for Halloween. I read one. Maybe I will find the time to pick up just another short story of this because my original goal with this short story collection was to find out if I like horror, specifically existential horror, which is what Thomas Ligotti writes. So maybe I'll pick up, hopefully, a few other short stories this week. The third one is Into the Crooked Place by Alexandra Cristo. This is the same author that wrote To Kill a Kingdom, which was one of my favorite books of 2020. I picked up this one um, because I wanted to pick up a book that I hadn't heard about. I just wanted to go into a book completely blind. Turns out that if you pick up a book that you've never heard about, there's usually a reason you never heard about it. And I am i don't know where I am. I think I'm about like 150 pages in and I stopped reading because I just didn't really like it. And then for audiobooks that I'm currently listening to, first I'm listening to The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. It's a science fiction book that explores a lot of ideas of society. We follow our main character from a kind of utopian anarchistic society and he goes to kind of the mother planet that is more like our world and it's about the differences between these worlds. Very interesting. Want to continue listening to this. And then I also, again for Halloween, there are a lot of books I started reading in like October and then just never finished. <laughs> I started listening to Tender is the Flesh, which is an Argentinian horror book, like body horror book that is about a apocalyptic future where animals can no longer be eaten. So people eat other people. Somehow just stopped listening to it because quite frankly, wasn't really enjoying it, but we'll get to that later. So those are the five books that I want to get to this week. I think my first conclusion that I can already pull is that I will probably not be finishing Into the Crooked King, Into the Crooked Place. This is one of those books that is full of action but has completely failed to make me care about the characters, therefore not making me care about the action or the danger at all. And I think that if I'm gonna try to finish it, I'm just gonna try to finish it just to finish it. And I don't think anyone needs to do that to themselves. 
So I think I'm just gonna decide that this one is going to remain unfinished and maybe one day I'll give it away to someone who knows. So yeah, that is the plan for this week. I'm also just gonna do a bunch of fun stuff and just chill and I'll take you along and I hope you're gonna enjoy the video. On this first day of having <laughs> fun on my holiday, I'm actually going to theme park today with my boyfriend. It's like my favorite theme park in the Netherlands. It's called the Efteling. And it's basically just a fairy tale themed theme park. Turn on the light. But it's like a two hour train ride to get there. So I'm obviously gonna take that time to, well, probably sleep, but. <laughs> Also, I'll, I'll take a book with me. Frankenstein, which I wanted to read during Halloween and now it's like December, but that's fine. <laughs> but I'm really excited. So I also film a few bits there because it's like a really pretty wintry wonderland and I think the vibes are great. Leo die uh, de verschrikkelijke sneeuwman gaat voeren met zichzelf. There's Leonie. She loved. She loved. She loved. Nee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Whoa! He flipped. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah, yeah. Talent. Hello, fit check. <laughs> I recently got this Spencer vest, I don't know what to call it. It has cute little hearts and I love it. I love wearing this, it's from Pull and Bear. I'm wearing my sword earrings. These are just like the most standard sword earrings that you can find on Amazon or AliExpress with this blue turtleneck that I've had for as long as I can remember. And I'm also wearing these orange pants from Monkey. I just like my outfit today, so I wanted to share. Anyway, it is a Wednesday today. I had a, so much fun at the Efteling yesterday. It was so magical. I felt like a child again. Anyway, right now what I really want to do is clean my room because I haven't been really doing that since I was so busy with school, but uh, you can't see it here, but it's a mess. It needs to be cleaned. So I'm gonna pull up an audiobook and just clean and vacuum and all that stuff so i have a normal livable space again i think i'm going to be listening to the dispossessed by ursula k Le Guin. i've been really enjoying this book i'm not even halfway through but so far i feel like this book it it just does what i never thought was possible <laughs> it's a science fiction book that is science fiction in the way that it just like explores an idea it explores ideas so well of just society and how this character that has moved this scientist physicist character that moved from one planet to the other kind of how he's experiencing things things that he likes better things that he likes not as well as on his home planet so interesting <laughs> so it's just a perfect setup for the exploration of so many interesting ideas about society but at the same time 
the main character is still interesting. Yeah, apparently it's possible because usually with these like older science fiction books that are really there to explore ideas, the characters are really boring. However much I love 1984 and like Breaking World and all that stuff, the characters are usually not, not that interesting. And the excuse is usually, well, that's because, you know, it's just there to focus on the idea, so it doesn't matter. Well, Ursula K. Le Guin is doing both, so. You can do both. You can write about this interesting character who's kind of not fitting in. You can see him kind of struggling on both worlds. He's not really home anywhere. He's interesting to read about. So you can write interesting characters and still have a book that mostly focuses on exploring ideas. So just want to let you know, I'm gonna listen to it and clean. Great. Hello, quick update. Hmm, it's very dark already. <laughs> I am now going on my way to some university friends because we're gonna eat dinner together. And it's about an hour ride, an hour train ride. So I thought this is the perfect time for me to finally finish listening to the audiobook of Tender is the Flash because I've been having trouble finishing that book. So I'm just gonna put it on while on the train and then finish the story. And then we'll talk about what I think about it and why I had such a hard time getting through it. It is a surprisingly sunny afternoon. Thinking about that song. It's already four in the afternoon. I spend the entire morning doing nothing, sleeping and gaming. I'm still obsessed with playing Zelda Breath of the Wild because that game is infinite. But what I wanted to talk about is that yesterday I finished Tender is the Flesh. I really wanted to like this. I picked it up because I wanted to read a horror book. This was supposed to be like super disturbing, super scary. It was disturbing, I'll give you that, because it's, you know, about cannibalism. But it just didn't do it for me. And I don't know if that's because horror books, gory horror books aren't doing it for me or because this specific book isn't doing it for me. Oh, look, the sun is coming. Sun, <laughs> I need to soak up some vitamin D, okay? The only time in the upcoming months that I'll be getting some sun, so. <laughs> so, Tender is the Flesh. Was it disturbing? Yes. Did it make me extremely uncomfortable, like horror is supposed to? Yes, it did that well, but the entire book, I was just kind of waiting for something, a point, a message, a deeper meaning, an actual plot, and it never happened. And I think that's my main disappointment with this book. I really felt like it could have done so much more, but it just kind of remained a little eh for me. The story just kind of flowed around in itself and I was like, where is it going? Is it gonna be something? I think what I gathered from the book is it does a good job at kind of making you think about animal slaughter and pet keeping because we're basically seeing humans in those same situations in this book. But again, I still felt like it could have just dug a little deeper and do a little bit more. For example, there was just one big question that I just had all the time while reading this book that was never answered, never gone into, and that is how did this start? When the virus happened and people couldn't eat meat anymore and they decided to eat people, who, how did that happen? Who got eaten first? How did they decide which people would get eaten and which ones would be eating. That's like the biggest, most huge question in my mind if you're gonna be writing a book like that and it's just never mentioned. And it's things like that that I was like, 
I'm missing things. Again, I do think it did a good job at really making you uncomfortable and making you think about the morality of things, but not much more, so I think I'll give it two and a half stars out of five. It was just mediocre. Talking about cannibalism aside, fun, very fun, okay. I kind of feel obligated to just make use of these few sun rays that are going on right now and I think I'll go into the city because I still need to buy some Christmas presents. I think the most important thing that I completely forgot to mention is that I I know I said at the beginning of this video that I wanted to, you know, ditch my phone. So I just wanted to give a check-in on how that's going. It's not going well. I'm on my phone way too much. So I'm gonna do the right thing and delete TikTok because, oh my god, it's horrible. It's gone, okay. And then I'll also close the tab on my browser that I always have Twitter open on because I don't even have the app anymore. I just opened it on my browser. Okay. I just need to stop being on this thing because I wasted, again, way too many hours on it this morning. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna chill and have fun and not be sucked in by my phone. So now that we've deleted some apps from our phone, it's time to touch grass and go outside. <laughs> I found presents. I can't show them to you because they already nicely packaged it. Look how cute. Look at the cute little Dutch houses. These are kind of building kits, I want to say. Like starter kits for building pasta sauces and bruschetta, spread, things like that. Just to get your cooking on, you know? I would, if I ended up with this present, I'd be happy. I just went to the bookstore because I can't help myself. <laughs> and I was hoping to buy a copy of Ursula Le Guin's The Dispossessed because I'm enjoying the audiobook so much and I'm putting so many bookmarks on the audiobook, but I never look at my audiobook bookmarks. So I'd love to have a physical copy that where I can actually tab all the places that I've now bookmarked in the audiobook. But they didn't have it. I have seen the book in the store more often, but they currently didn't have it. They did have other Le Guin books, but not The Dispossessed, so maybe another time. And then maybe this evening I'll have a spooky time and read a horror story from this book, maybe. I'm more so getting in the Christmas mood, the wintry mood, but that can be creepy and horror-y as well, I feel. For, for some reason, reading a horror story is cozy in my book, which fits with winter and Christmas, so.
for the spicy noodles that I made were way too spicy and I didn't finish them because my, like, it wasn't that they were too spicy. Like, I could handle them. It's just my stomach was like, no, stop doing that. I found a small little Christmas story in this short story collection. So I thought that is the perfect one to read. So I read a short Christmas horror story. The story takes place on Christmas Eve where the children are listening to Aunt Elise telling a horror story. And in Aunt Elise's story, a man gets lost in a fog that's full of weird creatures that are crying. And then the main character also kind of gets hazy and starts seeing this fog. That, but then like scarier than I can <laughs> talk about it. It was nice. I just know that short stories aren't really my thing. I never really feel the need to just randomly pick up a short story. I'd rather just like pick up a full book that I want to keep reading because I want to know what's gonna happen with these characters that I've gotten attached to over so many and so many pages, but it's still fun to have and look into once in a while. So floppy, by the way. Look, I think this is my floppiest book. I think there might be such a thing as a book that's just too floppy. Like it's just what is this? You can hold it open like this. Oh. Anyway, um, I'm not gonna have a chill evening. Uh, the rest of the day, it's Friday today, by the way, I'm gonna edit this video and then I'm gonna meet with some friends again and just hang out and chill. So probably won't be reading much more. I'm going to bike to my friend. So I'll probably listen to some more of The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin because I am I'm really enjoying that story. So I'm probably gonna be focusing on that book. Good morning everyone. It is a slow and rainy Saturday right now. I just spent the morning kind of working on some few things that I still had to do for my internship, which is starting on Monday. Very excited about it. I'm very excited to make a video about it so you guys will also know what's going on. I'm currently sitting on my desk <laughs> in front of my bookshelf. They don't look very nice right now, which is why I never film here. Maybe if I... Ooh, a plant. Very natural. <laughs> so the reason I'm sitting here is because I wanted to kind of give a little roundup of the books I've been reading so far. I'm about to grab my bags and go to my parents' house because I always visit them on the weekends. And I thought for now we could, I could do a little bit of a preliminary roundup of the books I've been reading so far this week and how it's been going. I have a whole pile next to my bed. Ooh. Oh, this one's a spoiler for an upcoming reading vlog. <laughs> so I finished Tenders the Flesh, so I uh, I cannot satisfactory put it from my to be read pile into my bookshelves because it's an audiobook, but I, uh, you know, I ticked it off from the audiobook shelf. <laughs> then we have Into the Crooked Place. Never this week did I feel the need to pick this up, so I'm just gonna count it as did not finish. I'm not gonna finish it. I'm gonna put it with the other. Um, why fantasies neat then we have songs of a dead dreamer really enjoy these short stories i'm not gonna keep it on my to be read pile next to my bed because i do notice i don't tend to reach for short stories as often so just gonna put it on the shelf with the classics and i can pick it up anytime i want to oh there's absolutely no boom <laughs> my fruit bowl is in the way <laughs> this means it's time to stack books. I'm just putting it next to John Keats' anthology because this is also an anthology. Yay, there's absolutely no more room there. <laughs> then we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I actually didn't make as much progress as I hoped I would. Um, I'm just gonna have to continue reading this one, but I am loving this story. I finished the part that's basically just about the doctor, Dr. Frankenstein, and now we are at the part where we are reading from the monster's perspective. So 
kind of a switch, kind of interesting. And then for audiobook, I'm also still listening to The Dispossessed. I am gonna continue listening to that on the train to my parents, so I'll give you the roundup on that book later. And then also, I thought it would be interesting to look at my phone screen time to see how I did this week, just to see what happened to my screen time once I delete TikTok. <laughs> So now I can show you a bunch of shots of me going to my parents and being on the train or I could just do some movie magic right now. Whoa, how, how did she do that? <laughs> okay, it is Sunday, it's the end of the week. My internship starts tomorrow, I had a week off. I spend a bunch of time chilling and reading books. Uh, let's take a look at my phone screen time to see how I did. But first, the last roundup book is The Dispossessed by Ursula Le Guin. I still have about three hours left, so I really got quite far into it uh, this week, which I'm very happy about. I realized that the main character from The Dispossessed, also kind of like a sciencey guy, reminds me of Victor from Arcane, the new Netflix animated series that I've been really loving. I'm only on episode five, so no spoilers, but Victor has become one of my favorite new fictional characters of all time and the main character in The Dispossessed kind of reminds me of him and I like that. <laughs> now let's take a look at my phone screen time to see how I actually did. I just want to check if it's still bad or if it's just a lot better after like for example deleting TikTok <laughs> because I personally think phone time is not always bad. You know, it's great that you can keep in contact with your friends and go on Spotify and look things up on the internet and all that stuff. It's just when you start getting sucked into your social media feed that you don't want to get sucked into. That's not good. Oh, it's really not that bad. <laughs> it's about less than two hours every day. And you can see that the first three days I mostly spend a lot of my time on Twitter, which I toned down at the end. And you can see that like on Friday and Saturday, most of my time was just spent on Spotify, which I don't think is a bad thing. Okay, I like Spotify. Wow, I was really expecting to be confronted with like a horrible screen time, but two hours a day, that's, a, that, that's completely fine. Okay, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Did not expect that. Wow, it's almost like focusing on things that you enjoy doing makes you spend less time on your phone. <laughs> I did not finish like all seven of the books that I was in the midst of reading, but that was also never the goal. I just wanted to finish a few and get further in a few, and I think I did that and I had a really great time and I did a lot of fun things, so all in all, I'd say that was a good week. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and just having a chill time with me, reading some books. Let me know which books you're currently reading and if it's also like way too many <laughs> like I was. You can follow me on my social media if you want to for those times that I am on Twitter a lot. If you subscribe to the channel, a fairy will come to your house and bless you with the power to finish all the books that you're currently reading. So don't want to miss out on that. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye. <laughs>